Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. That's Mark 9.23. I want you to commit it to your heart. It's a game changer. That scripture is a what? In the midst of difficulties, when you don't know what to do, this scripture will bubble forth in your spirit, man, and the devil is a loser in your life. Because all that that scripture is saying is, what do you want? That's the summary of that scripture. What do you... Because whatever you want, if you believe, it happens. If thou canst believe, Jesus saying, all things, how many things, are possible to him that believeth. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 b. This is what the Bible says. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Read with me now. Believe in his prophets. Let's read one again. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. How many of us want to prosper here this morning? Wow. Glory be to God. Now, prosperity is not only when we make plenty of money. Prosperity talks about you going forward peacefully in every dimension of your life. I've, I've told us that several times. If you belong to this house for the last two years, then you understand what prosperity means. It means salak. And it means to go forward peacefully in every dimension of your life. You can have money and be in trouble. There will be no peace. You can, you can have money and be sick. There will be no peace. You. So money is not the measurement at all. There are many things we enjoy that money can't buy. Praise God. Am I still talking here that money is useless as far as those things are concerned you know when you close your eyes to sleep do you know how many people will have to take literally pills every night to pump themselves before they go to sleep i talked about this before so listen to me child of god we are blessed tell your neighbor you are blessed because God just, just you know, pours his, his, his goodness into our lives. And because we are just completely misfocused, we think that we are not blessed. Some people are far more blessed than us. It's a lie from the pit of hell. You are blessed. You are blessed. You, you, go, to, you go to the hospital, then you know you are blessed. You, 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 you go and, and ask what people are going through. Hello. Tell anybody you are blessed. Life without limitation is possible. Amen? When Jesus needed an upper chamber where the last supper must be prepared, how much did he pay to hire the place? He spoke out by faith. He needed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem on which no man has sat. Donkey in those days is an equivalent of Rolls Royce today. He didn't have one. What did he do? He didn't have the money to buy. Hello? You know the story. By faith. Someone said by faith. He spoke. He said go. And I know some of you are beginning to think, well, he's God. Well, he's God. Now, now, scripture says he emptied himself. Have you read that scripture before? Yeah. Because if he didn't empty himself and had come to live as God upon the face of the earth, then we will have the right to say we can't do the things he's asking us to do because we are not in that category. Is someone here what I'm saying? But he came as a man and showed us that we can be upgraded. Tell him about upgrade. And the process of upgrading is faith. It's faith. He says somebody will ask you. He knew he was not using word of knowledge. No, he, was, he knew that it belonged to someone. If you go and take 
something that has been tied up by someone's house. Won't somebody come out and ask you what, what, where you do? Just say to them, the master had need of it. Faith. I've been, I've been where you are. I've been there many times. When I see, well, I can't do this. The moment you say, I can't, the door is closed after you. Am I talking? So Jesus said, to him that believeth, how many things? He needed to pay taxes for himself and Peter. He had no money. He said, Peter, you are a fisherman. You are the fisherman. What is in your hands can make us pay? Go. Do what you know to do. Faith. Listen to me, child of God. We have limited ourselves by reason of our failing to exercise the faith that is in our heart. Jesus knew about Proverbs 18.20 from the God's Word translation. What did it say? Quickly. Proverbs 18.20. A person's speaking ability provides for his stomach. His talking provides him a living. Knowing that scripture, he simply exercises faith in talking. Tell your neighbor, don't let the devil shut your mouth down. As believers, we often abandon faith and operate in foolishness. And when we do so, we face financial limitations. Let me just share with you a few of the things we do that are foolish. I call them foolish. Three of them this morning. That will be sufficient. Number one, the folly of self direction the folly of what self direction the folly of self direction when we live away from god's purpose for our lives financial limitation will be an issue why god provides only for the things he orders hello are you still with me many of us in the church are guilty of giving ourselves directions. We set out, we call it planning, and we go to do. And then we ask him, please, you are the rubber stamp on my table. I stamp you on this, approve it. No. God is not our rubber stamp. Anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. God will prosper the things he originates. God will fund the things he orders for. God will provide for the things he has asked you to do. In them, challenges will come, but he will grace you to overcome. In them, difficulties will arise, but you will always win. Why? He is with you in them. Hello? Now, don't think that because God asked you to do that, there will be no challenges. No. He told them to go to the other side. What happened? The storm met up with them. So, he said, when you are in the waters, I will be with you so they will not overflow you. In the fire, I will be with you so it will not burn you. Listen to me. He will be with you in the challenges of life when he asks you to. But if you get into those challenges by yourself, you are on your own. Am I still talking? The folly of self-direction. Jeremiah understood this. So, in Jeremiah chapter 10, 23, he prayed, Oh Lord, I know that the path of life of a man is not in himself. It is not within the limited ability of man, even one at his best, to choose and direct his steps in life. It's not in us. Am I still talking here? Money follows the purposes of God. Wisdom, therefore, is to live according to God's direction. The psalmist knew this. 
So in Psalm 37, 23, Psalm 37, 23, he declares, the Lord shows us how we should live and he is pleased when he sees people living that way. Everyday reading version of the Bible. To live according to God's direction requires faith. Beloved, it takes faith, therefore, to live above financial limitations. What does it take? What does it take? Number two, the folly of fear of failure. It's a foolishness that happens to us all the time. You know, fear, listen to me, it's a psychological issue. And it is worse when directed towards steps that are capable of enhancing your financial status or your financial standing or fortunes. Now, God has given you and I the mandate to increase by labor. Tell neighbor, increase by labor. That's why this church is not popular because this is not the place to say, go and prosper in the name of Jesus. Now, what are you doing for you, for you to prosper? We increase by labor. Tell neighbor, we increase by labor. It is in what you're doing that the goodness of God will manifest. If you have nothing to do, there's nothing for you to go forward in. Am I talking here? Yeah, yeah. So, so we can't say, we can't stand here in all good conscience and say, this week you will come into one billion naira. And you say, amen. You are amen is in vain. Because if you have no handwork, there is nothing. But Bible says, he that does not work should not do what? You know the scripture. So, that is the truth of the matter. God has given us a mandate to increase by what? Labor. To increase by what? It's a mandate we have. So in Proverbs 14.23, the Bible says, in all labor there is what? Profit. But the talk of the lips tended only to penury. However, often, listen to me, the uncertainty surrounding the elements of our labor are so overwhelming that they beat fear the fear of failure into our hearts. Now, accepting that fear has made a number of us sit back and not take the required steps to financial liberty in life. Let me give you a dimension of fear of failure. It is in the area of ignorance. Often, God opens up opportunities for us to advance financially. But our lack of knowledge or adequate information in that particular area or sector beats fear, the fear of failure into our hearts and causes us to turn away from such opportunities. I know some of us sitting down here that have suffered that. We don't know. Well, what I don't know, what, what am I going to do? Ignorance. It causes us to experience fear of failure. No, I can't do because I don't know anything about that thing. And yet information is available. You can educate yourself. Hello. Again, another dimension. We allow the fear of failure to affect us and have us paralyzed when we listen to negative testimonies or advices of very well meaning people whose voices carry influence with us who knows what i'm talking about hello have you ever shared an idea with someone and they tell you that your idea came dead on arrival hello ah i know they point out to you 999 reasons why that idea can't succeed. And they give you names of those that have tried that idea and have failed before. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Those people are experts at negative information. And they are excellent at finding holes and pouring ice blocks upon ideas. By the time you finish with them, you drop it. You can't go forward. There is this fear that is called learned helplessness. Let me quickly explain it. Learned what? Helplessness. It's a psychological situation. But it affects us financially. That's why I didn't bring it last week. I'm bringing it now. When an elephant is a, a baby elephant, they will tie it to a stake. And every time the baby elephant wants to run, the stick is there, so he can't move anywhere. Do you understand? They leave him in that condition to grow. 
and he becomes a full matured elephant. And that elephant moves nowhere. Why? Since as a baby, he has tried to move and something always had held him back. Do you understand? Now, he does not realize that he is big enough. One move of his leg, that rope will cut off. He doesn't even bother himself because over the years, he has learned that every time he tries to move, something holds him back. Who understands what I'm talking about? It's called learned helplessness. Some of us have gotten involved in businesses and we failed repeatedly. And we failed repeatedly. And we convince ourselves business is not for me. It's called learned helplessness. We never stop to consider how we did those businesses and they failed. No. We just agree that no, for me, I can't do business because if I do, I will fail. Do you know how many times I've failed? Pastor, leave it or you don't understand. I've been failing many, many times. So it's not for me. I've removed my hand. It's learned helplessness. That's what they call it. Do we understand what I'm saying? It beats fear of failure into our hearts regularly. I know some women who will never marry again. I know some girls who will never enter into relationships because they've had terrible experiences with men. And as far as they're concerned, every man is a wicked devil. Have you seen such women before? Oh, they are there. It's called learned helplessness. Because no two people are the same. Hello? But they will never ever go forward. Because they have, through experience, come to know that they can't succeed in that. It is a lie from the pit of hell. Am I still talking? Now, in all, fear-ruled hearts can never advance in life with God. If you are a child of God, you cannot allow fear to rule your heart. The reason is simple. Fear of any sort is a manifestation of doubt and unbelief. Two things that attract God's displeasure. Am I still talking here? In fact, Revelation in chapter 21 verse 8, the Bible says that the fearful and unbelieving together with several other things shall suffer the second death. So never allow fear to rule your heart. It takes faith to silence the voice of fear in any heart. Apostle Peter gives us an insight on how it takes faith to break the power of financial limitation by fear of failure. Now listen to me. You know this story. You know it. Together with several others as experienced fishermen, they toiled all night. You remember that incident, don't you? And they caught what? Nothing. Feeling already a failure. My goodness. At the dawn of the day, hey, by the seashore, was the master who asked them to cast their net for a drought. Of course, Peter, not wanting to perpetuate the feeling of failure, told the master that there was no need for casting of net. We are experts. We have done so all night and we caught nothing. Then he realized, having listened to Jesus teach, it was his boat he used. And then he said, at thy word, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to change my mind. He changed his mind. And what did he do? He cast his net. What was the result? What was the result? What was the result? The result is there. In Luke chapter 5 verse 6. Instantly, when they had done this, they enclosed what? A great multitude of fishes and their net break. Now that last one is terrible. The last one is terrible. I don't have time to get into it. My time is running. That last one, net breaking harvest is not a good harvest because there will be nothing in the fish in the net. In the, in the, there will be no fish in the net when your net is broken. No. It's a terrible thing. You know, they, they suffered that because Peter himself did not believe in the first place. Is someone hear what I'm saying? So, Jesus was demonstrating to us that financial limitation can be broken by faith. Number three, folly of disobedience. Folly of what? Disobedience to God's express instructions has been a major reason for many believers suffering financial limitation. 
I'm telling you, I know it. For them, every instruction of God must make sense before it commands their obedience. Hey, you want to walk with God and you want to put God in your limited ability, you can't function. Am I still talking? Hello? Hello? No. Yeah, me child of God. Often, when you walk with God, God will give you instructions that do not make sense to you. Who knows what I'm talking about here? That will make you look stupid, make you look foolish. That type of foolishness is the best one. When you are walking in foolishness but in obedience to God's instruction. But you know, we are human beings. We don't like to look foolish. So if the thing does not make sense to us, mm, it can't be from God. Mm, it can't be from God. Let me quickly tell you, just to buttress this point. I got born again in 1988. And I started walking closely with God in 1990. In these 28 years that I started walking closely with God, listen, the very moments I have made appreciable progress in my life, hear me, child of God, are the moments I have obeyed God's express instructions that made no sense to me whatsoever in the beginning. Every time God speaks to me and it didn't make sense to me and I there obeyed him, I make progress in my life. I'm a living proof. I always make progress. The first was God asking me to leave my practice, my legal practice in Portacot and leave for Lagos. He, wow. I had just failed my primaries in NRC under Babangida's transition. And as a young man, I had built up political clout and connections. It didn't make sense for me to leave Portacot. Hello? I said, wow. I know the who is who in my state. Come on now. Why should I leave? What am I doing? No, no, no. Lagos is not my place. I have to remain in Putaka to make it. I want to hammer. And how can I abandon all these things and walk away? But listen to me. I obeyed. Thank God I did. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Then... <laughs> He asked me to walk out of my legal practice again and never return. But go and submit myself to my father in the love and serve in ministry. It didn't make sense to me. Given my personal ambition to become a senior advocate of Nigeria and to make a lot of money. He, I was building up myself for where I was headed. And I thought that that instruction from the Lord was at variance with my journey in life. Can you listen to me? I disobeyed. What did I do? Some of you know my story. I suffered. I did what? I suffered. Then I repented and obeyed. I thank God I did. Settled in Lagos and happy. I was making plans to start my own ministry. When again, the Lord came to me and said to me, move to Abuja. It didn't make sense to me. But I obeyed. I thank God I did. God's instructions were clear to me. Listen to me now. Not to get involved in any business. He spoke to me. And he gave me assurances. Israel, I will meet you at your point of need. But don't get involved in businesses. You know, sometimes we think we know ourselves better than God. No, no, no. He made you. He fashioned you. He formed you from nothing. He knows everything about you. So when you think you know yourself more than God, you're making a big mistake. Am I talking here? Because a manufactured good cannot know itself more than the manufacturer. Am I still talking here? Ah, oh, God. Hear me. Hear me. God knows your journey better than you do. He knows your life better than you do. Before you became, he already knew you. He knew you. Ah, here. Yeah. I refuse to obey that instruction repeatedly. And for as many times I failed to obey that instruction not to do any business, you know? I have asked God, why do you give me so many business ideas? Have you, have you sat down with me to talk business? Ah, oh, you'll, be, you'll be amazed. I, I, carry, I carry grace, information. And so I said, Lord, you can't load me up like this and I don't, I, I, I don't use it for my benefit. He said, no, it's not for you. I said, no, Lord. So I refuse. Listen to me. 
I even tried to play for one night with God. And I told my wife, you go and do it. Lord, it's not me, it's my wife. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's everything. It collapsed. I lost money. And you know, every time I lose, I go back and I beg. He makes it up for me. Read story. This is my life story. He, he pays the bills. He pays the bills. 36 million Naira loan. Every month, he gives me a thousand dollars with which it's paid. The moment the loan is over, the manner ceased. I'm telling you my story. My story. I was in disobedience. I lost a lot of money. The last one, I did not only nearly lose my life. Everyone with me would have died because I had gone for another business trip. I should not have gone for. Did someone hear what I'm saying? Then I said, Lord, I will not disobey you anymore. I'm still talking here. Now, when we walk in disobedience, we will suffer financial limitation. So, walk in obedience. Who does that remind you of in the Bible? Jonah. Jonah, trying to run away from God, did not only come near losing his life. He almost brought everyone down with him. You remember the story? And there are many of us sitting here who are trying to run away from God's plan, God's assignment for our lives. So when you abandon in disobedience God's plan for your life, what do you think will happen? You suffer financial limitation. Because he is the one that provides to meet the things he has sent you on. Am I still talking? Am I still talking? So the way to go forward, therefore, Number one, stop directing yourself. Number two, stop that fear in your heart. Number three, stop walking in disobedience. Did I help anybody this morning? You can put those hands together. You can put them together. Because you see, what I have just shared with you can save you a lot of pain. It can save you a lot of heartache. Whenever, therefore, you are meeting the enemy frustrating you at the levels of your purposes financially. You need to stop. You need to ask, Lord, am I in your will? Am I talking here? If God says you are in my will, then stay. God will provide. How many times have you been asked? Just the disobedience as I close. How many times have you been asked to go and meet someone to help you? And you look at the person God is saying you to say, that one. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. And you refuse to go. Hello? Is anybody like that there? How many times has God asked you to do something? And you look at yourself, me, do that. It's beneath me. Disobedience. How many times, if you can be truthful to yourself, has God asked you to give away what you have in your hands? Financially. Now this is how it works. Oftentimes, you have money in your hand that you want to use for a particular business and you're asking the lord and it's not enough you're asking the lord lord help me lord help me bring the balance and god is not bringing it and he says to you my son my daughter take that money go and give to so so person satan i bind you money where are they look for money to complete what type of thing is that no 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 it's not satan you know your money in your hand is useless Hello? Hello? Your money is not seed. God didn't create money, so money can't be seed. The seed is God's word. When God says to you, take that money, go and give to so, so, so. God's word wrap that money, it becomes seed. Am I making sense to you? That is what can bring you harvest. But if you disobey, the opportunity to make, to come into harvest is gone. Praise God. Praise God. Disobedience. When you know that financial limitations can be broken and you walk by faith with God and you open your ears to let him direct your paths. You open your heart
to frustrate every lying tongue that brings fear into you and you completely submit yourself to obey his every instruction. Hear me, child of God. Your life will be a wonder. Your life will be a mystery because in the face of challenges, you will always triumph. Limitations will lose their powers over your life. You believe that? Rise on your feet.